the Hutchison effect include levitation of both massive and non-massive objects that are sometimes metallic, sometimes magnetic, and sometimes non-magnetic. What is the Hutchison effect? It's an accidental discovery I made way, way back in 1979 when I was replicating a lot of Nikola Tesla's machinery, actually to the 18th century standards, and I was playing with this high-voltage um, equipment, and I started to notice that certain things would happen, like objects would move around by themselves a little bit. How the Hutchison effect works. Well, uh, first of all, George, you cannot explain this effect in, in, with conventional physics. Uh, John is able to, to shred bars of steel. This effect could be used as a weapon, couldn't it? Uh, there was talk about it being used in Iraq. I got strange emails from people saying that they mm -hmm. were using the Hutchison effect and vaporizing buses and other things like that. So a great weapon, yes. He had a flying saucer flying around. He had a yeah, remote control. Yeah, absolutely. And it kept going, and it never stopped, I guess. It, it's still going somewhere beyond the solar system now. Yeah, these things will avoid collisions. Once they get going, they, they, they'll, uh, they'll either... Uh, become uh, uh, invisible, or uh, they'll just pass right through things and be, uh, become, they, they go through a whole, uh, something called singularities. And in physics, uh, uh, if you can avoid singularities, that means you're avoiding collisions, more or less. So the system, uh, these systems go either avoid something or they just pass right through it and become invisible and go into another dimension. So it's funny, uh, it's, it's, as far as space travel goes, you, it's, it's the best thing you can ever imagine because you don't need any power and you don't run into anything. How would it work for propulsion? How fast could they go? I would say unlimited speed and also uh, no problems with inertia and turning in hyper propulsion going faster than light.